Hi. So today, question six, although not quite a question, more of an assignment. If you are planning on or thinking about doing any kind of upgrade or change or building a new home, there is some homework that can be very helpful to you and your interior designer if you have this done before your first consultation. So the first part of the homework is that whatever room that you are planning on updating or remodeling, or every room if that's the case uh, with a new build or a, an overall new look, is that you keep a pad of paper handily available for however many people uh, in the household that are going to be using that space or those spaces. So uh, for a couple, that would be each of you in the kitchen, uh, if you have children or another uh, party living in the house, somebody, their bedroom or their bathroom, anybody that needs to be included. And part of this is that as you use those spaces currently in your home, even if you're getting ready to build a new home, is that you have an I love and an I hate list. And so what that I love and I hate list is going to do is most of the time we think of things as we're using the space. So we're going to use the kitchen as an example because it's the easiest one to reference and uh, most easily understood. So you keep a pad of paper, uh, one page or whatever it is for each of the people that are going to be using that space, even if they're not the cook. Um, a lot of times I run into there's one person that does the cooking and one person that does the dishes. Maybe you have uh, teenage children that also come in and use the space. So what you want to do is have an I love and I hate list and we typically don't remember those in the heat of the moment when we're in a design console. When we remember them um, is when we are going to cook our lunch and we go to open that one drawer that always sticks or runs into something else or is in the wrong space or whatever it is. There's a, a number of things that we typically will run across that just drive us insane every time we go to do something in that space or to do with that function in the kitchen. So that's the I hate list. And then typically there's always going to be a few things that you really like. Write those down so that you can make sure to incorporate them in the new space. This is extremely helpful and important. You might not get everything you want. You might not be able to get rid of everything you don't want. But 95-90% of the time a good designer is going to help you really reevaluate your new space so that those same things don't come up again. Some of that is also going to be a little bit of research. Uh, the doodads, right? The doodads in a kitchen are super fun. The stuff that goes inside the drawers and inside the cabinets. Uh, do an I must have list and a I want list. Those are also extremely important. I absolutely must have a trash can cabinet somewhere next to my sink or my prep area. I don't want my trash can sitting outside in the kitchen, which trash can is like one of the number one things forgotten about in kitchen design. Uh, you don't want to put your trash can under the sink anymore. You don't want it sitting at the end of the counter anymore. You want an actual cabinet for it. Um, and that's a do or die. I'm not going to do without this. I absolutely have to have. So those are the kinds of things that you want to write into your list. I must haves and I wants because everybody's going to do the, the search, right? You're going to get on and you're going to look at kitchen doodads. You're going to look at gadgets. You're going to look at kitchen designs and you're going to run across all these really cool pictures of things that you really like. Some things are going to be totally doable and some things maybe not depending on your space. So just make sure which, which ones you're willing to compromise and do without and which ones you are absolutely not going to do without. So super important parts of the list. And, uh, and then along the lines of the research and pictures, this is another assignment that I give to all of my clients. For each person, and we'll assume a couple, each party gets on to a Google. Let's Google kitchen design or Google new kitchens or Google kitchen, but you only want to look at the images. So you do that, look at the images, and pick three to six pictures of kitchens that you like. And, and again, we're just going to use kitchens as an example. Now, a couple of things to remember when you're doing this. Six is the limit. You don't need more than six, trust me. As a designer, three to six pictures, we will see a pattern. Contrast level, color 
preferences. Uh, sometimes it'll be about space and lighting and all that kind of thing. And we'll be able to pick up on that regardless of whether or not you know why you like the picture. So I tell my clients all the time, go through the, go through the images and pick up if it, if it appeals to you, pick it select it if it just really pulls you in because that's our feelings our feelings like our instant reaction to these are going to be the most important it doesn't matter if it's three times the size of your kitchen or half the size of your existing kitchen or your new kitchen it doesn't matter if it's in the color combination that you want although sometimes that will be affected uh really it's just about those first three to six pictures that really really appeal to you and for each person, they should do that. Past six gets to be a bit much. Now, granted, I understand everybody wants to save the Pinterest of the pull-out pantry cabinet that they really like. And that's in your I want or must have list, not in your design concept. When you're looking at images of the whole room, what you're looking for is an overall theme or design concept. And and you don't have to know why. Just just. Go with your gut. The designer will be able to help you consolidate all of that into a style that will appeal to you because that's what we're going for. Our spaces are super personal, super personal. And how we feel when we walk into a room or see a space is vitally important to how we use that space, how comfortable we are, and, uh, and how we're going to continue to feel about that space over time. So those three to six pictures and stop. Trust me, we don't need more than six. Typically within the first three, we'll be able to pick up on a pattern of color, contrast, and, and lighting, among other things that a designer will be able to help you with in that space. So that's your homework. Bring it to your first consultation. Have it ready. You will be, uh, so one, you'll impress your designer that you have an idea of what's going on. And, and two, it will help... Uh, really be exceedingly effective in assisting your designer without wasting um, the time that you're paying for, right? Like we want to make it as effective and efficient as possible and still get you the design you want. We don't want to do this on the second or third time. We want to know right away. So make a list, save some pictures. Those are your homework. Make sure you're ready and, uh, and have some fun. We'll talk to you tomorrow.